Testing, one, two, three, testing. Yep. Thank you. Make it to your stand. Yeah. Yes. Pro proživljavam malo sada. Skupljaju se utisci. Kasniš na na čas. Još jedan put i ukor. Bio sam ovdje na studiju, pa verovatno. A polako. Buongiorno signore. Ah, sorry, I don't know. I, I, I'm here already for 10 minutes. I'm waiting for you guys. <laughs> But you're Italian, I, so it's, it's uh, normal that you're late a little bit. <laughs> biti mesta za sve. Boga mi kao da trebam da dam neko saopštenje koje nikad pre nisam dao. <laughs> to jest, to jest. To jest. Pa mislim šta reći. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 to je hiljadu kako lepih stvari. <laughs> Novak, many congratulations. Thank Can you, you just describe what went through your mind at 5-4 and after the match point, after all those years you've tried to win this Grand Slam? Well, um, a lot has, has been <laughs> going on um, in my mind uh, ever since I arrived in Paris. Uh, but um, I felt like this year when I arrived that um, it's, it's really different from any other year. The, the relationship and connection I had with fans and with people around that are um, you know, contributing to the organization of the event that I see on a daily basis, you know, from security to... Uh, you know, uh, ball boys, ball girls, and all the people around. It's, it was it was just different, you know. And and uh, obviously, as any other year, I was hoping that this is the year. Um, but I, um, um, you know, I, I I felt that kind of uh, support and love from from the people around that that allowed me to be to be sitting here with the trophy. That that's for sure. You know, that that kind of support was um, uh, very well present at at, at the stadium today. Um, you know, I entered the court um, you know, quite prepared. Um, I started well, f first game, and then I dropped the four games, and you know, nerves kicked in. And um, you know, I needed a little bit of time to to really find the right rhythm and <clears throat> start to play the way I intended, which happened in the beginning of the second and practically till five two in the in the fourth set. Uh, I was it was uh, flawless tennis. You know, I, I really felt like played on a high quality and. You know, putting a lot of pressure on on Andy's serves and uh, uh, just trying trying to hang in there. You know, and uh, I was I was coming into the court today knowing that I need to give it all in in every aspect of my being, in every uh, meaning of that word, in order to to win this trophy. And uh, so so when I when I got to five two, I was just um, when I managed when I broke him the second time, I got to five two in the fourth. I just started started laughing. I don't know. I had that kind of. Uh, Emotion. It was not really. I didn't feel too much pressure, honestly. You know, and and uh, maybe I took things a bit too lightly, and um, you know, uh, just played a loose game in five two. And and Andy encouraged himself each point to, <clears throat> you know, to come back and and fight through, which he did. Uh, and then five four, obviously forty fifteen. You know, two two close points. Then yeah, the, the, you know, you, you you train as a professional athlete to to always be in the moment and focus on the next point and you know not care too much about what's 
in the past or what what is coming up because you can't influence that but we're all humans and you know uh, arriving so close like never before in my life to this this trophy and winning it it was you know i felt it you know i felt uh, the tension the excitement uh, all the emotions you name it um and then you know i was just trying to focus on serving well getting the first serve in and, and trying to put myself in a good position those few points which which I've done, and in the last couple of exchanges, in the last point, I don't even remember what happened. I, uh, it was really one of those things where you just, um, the moments where you just try to be, be there, and um, it's 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 like my, <laughs> my spirit has left my body, and I was just observing my body, you know, fight the last three, four exchanges, you know, going left, to right, and hoping that Andy will make a mistake, which has happened, and uh, yeah. Just um, a thrilling moment, really one of the most beautiful I've, I've had in my career. Okay. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Novak, building here, building on what you said, that you felt that everything was different this year, would you say that it started exactly at last year's ceremony when you... Because you told me in London that you never felt anything like that yes. before. Yes, yes, I, I, I really... Uh, felt something very strong uh, with with French crowd with uh, you know with Vavrinka uh, it was just a very uh, particular moment that I had never felt before on the court last year in the final and uh, I, I, I felt short you know I didn't win that match but you know I, I lost to a better player but you know what happened afterwards uh, the appreciation and respect I got from uh, from the crowd and that standing ovation really touched me deep inside and you know I was so looking forward and so eager to come back and 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 you know be part of this event uh, again and that, and I think you're right you know that's where it actually uh, got to another level of of connection <clears throat> Novak what's it like to hold all four grand slam titles at the same time <sighs> Well, it's um, incredibly flattering to, to know that um, Rod Laver uh, was the last one, you know, managed to do that. Of course, it's, it's not much, not many words that can describe it. You know, it's, it's one of the, the ultimate uh, challenges that you have as a tennis player. So I'm, I'm very proud, very thrilled, obviously, and, uh, you know, but... It's uh, it's hard for me to to reflect on what has happened before and what's going to happen after. I mean, I'm I'm just so overwhelmed with with having this trophy next to me that uh, I'm just trying to enjoy this moment. Novak, could you tell us when did you talk to Guga about uh, to draw the heart in the and what he said to you? What did you ask him? And uh, when when did you have that idea about it? Well, we we had. Um, <coughs> Uh, a nice couple of days of um, commercial sh uh, shoot for Peugeot, and we did a couple of fun, fun videos together. And um, and then I had um, uh, one of these traditional uh, rides with him from with the with the car and the camera inside takes you from the tennis club to home. And then then we talked, and then I you know I mentioned that to him even before that that him drawing the heart on the court is for, for me personally most memorable moment that I have ever seen from Roland Garros um, and it was something completely different so I asked him if I have that permission and honor in case I win to to do that so he gave me that permission and uh, I still haven't seen him now and hopefully I'll see him soon so we can uh, we can share the impressions a little bit. Novak over here um, there was a period when you know you were banging your head against the wall against Federer and Nadal and didn't feel like you were, you didn't know if you would ever break through. And, and now you've accomplished something that, you know, your two greatest rivals probably will never have the chance to do. And I'm just wondering if that's meaningful to you and, and if so, why? Well, first, you know, they're still active, so <laughs> players. So it's, um, I think it's fair to say that they will still have a chance to do it. Um, but they were both not a match, but a couple sets away from, from doing that few times in their careers. And, uh, um, you know, I was saying a million times before, and I'll say it again, you know, these, these two guys have, uh, and Andy as well, the, the rivalries with all three, the three of the guys have, have definitely in, in, in uh, big 
part and big margin helped me to become a better player and, and uh, helped me achieve all these things. And um, of course, uh, I, I look, you know, the rivalries that we have are important for the sport. And, and in, in one way or another, you try to compare yourself to, to them and what they have achieved before because Nadal and Feder um, were so dominant in the sport when Andy and myself you know, came in, in the mix. Um, but again, uh, I'm, just, I'm just glad to be... At the beginning, I was not glad to be part of their era, but uh, <laughs> later on, later on <laughs> I realized that um, in life everything happens for a reason. You're put in this position uh, with a purpose, a purpose to learn and to grow and to evolve. And, uh, you know, fortunately for me, I realized that um, I, need to, I need to get stronger, you know, and, and, and that, that I need to accept the fact that I'm competing with these two, two tremendous champions and that, you know, then, then everything was, was uphill from that, from that moment on. Um, Novak, how important was saving the break point in the first game of the second set? Because it, it did seem like the match changed after that. Well, um, yes, well, that, 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 was, that was one of the, the crucial moments. But, you know, I think in general, just in the second set, even that game that I was faced the break point, I still felt different than I felt in the first set. You know, I just kind of restarted my system and uh, I got, got to... Um, um, got myself in a in, to to run in a positive direction, you know, and I felt better, more comfortable on the court, you know, and um, as I said, you know, up to five two in the fourth set, that you know that window of of, of tennis was was just a uh, great quality. Novak, you said some very kind words about Roger and Rafa earlier, um, but do you feel by doing this, by doing something that no one can say, well, Roger's done it though so many more times. Rafa's done it so many more times. This is your own unique achievement in amongst those guys. Have you stepped out a little bit from under their shadow? Do you feel? Well, I, I don't think it's uh, on me to judge that. You know, I, I I'm not. Um, in some ways, I'm, I was comparing myself to them in terms of game and what I need to do in order to to learn to get the best out of my abilities and to try to overcome the challenge of winning against them and, and, and try to break their dominance. But I was, I'm not comparing myself to them, um, you know, as, 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 as people, as persons. We're all different and we're all unique in our own ways. And I, I, I have great respect for, for both of them and what they have, uh, who they are, first of all, and what they have achieved in their life. And, and they, they mean a lot to, in, to the sport. Plus, they are... Um, years ahead of me in terms of being part of professional circuit so you know they they uh, they're great champions on and off the court and because of the time that they spend on the tour they, they have lots of fans around the world and lots of support and it's wonderful to see you know I'm just I'm just glad to be competing with them that's that's all and I'm you know obviously um, trying to focus and 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 direct my attention to what I do and to who I am and what I bring to to the life and to the sport. Um, so I think all of us contribute something different. Uh, Novak, 25 years ago in 24, Jim Courier won this tournament and everybody thought that he was uh, very strong, very athletic, uh, very powerful, but not so much touch. And he was a little bit annoyed about that. And I want to ask you, today, uh, you were unbelievable. All Every time you were playing a drop shot or a counter drop Remind shot, me, I mean, you did incredible things uh, with the touch. Mm. It's something that uh, we didn't expect a few years ago from you. Do you... Did you give you particular satisfaction, those points, uh, pumped up, uh, important? They, they were important points. Some important points I won with drop shot, but I think uh, percentage-wise, I've, I've lost more points with playing a drop shot than, than I won today. Um, and I put myself in a little bit of a tricky position, situation when playing those drop shots. Uh, when there maybe I, I could have chosen a different selection of the shot. But uh, regarding the touch, uh, growing up in Serbia, we played a lot of mini tennis, a lot of uh, different games in the, in the service um, box. And I think that helps. Uh, that helps a little bit. And over the time, I, over the course of my career, I, I try to always keep that 
you know, routine, especially in the practice uh, preparation parts of the year where I get to do that with, um, you know, with, with, with other players that I practice with, you know, we get to play this. It's, it's, it's nice, you know, <laughs> it helps on clay, especially. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Nole, I'm, yeah. I'm very sad to report that uh, Gustavo Kirten was extremely disappointed in your artwork. He felt the <laughs> composition had problems and you yes. need to work on yes. it. Yes. But uh, <laughs> in, in a serious way, um, just talk a little bit. It's so, uh, well, it's so hard to cross the finish line, really, after yeah. two yeah. weeks, after years, after yeah. a whole career. And just talk about that time when you felt... You were so almost out of your body. You know, you're yes, looking at just it's expensive. kind of kind of out of body experience. It's it's uh, I've, I've felt it very few times in my life where I uh, my career where I actually, you know, uh, felt that um, my body was just um, on autopilot, you know, and and that um, you know some because of the emotions because of the. I mean, everything starts from inside, you know, I mean, the way you perceive things in life, that's how they happen for you. So I, uh, obviously on the court, I, <laughs> I realized the importance of the moment that I'm in. And um, also we played for three hours and, you know, I had a long season so far and we were both exhausted. And that last point was uh, the moment that where you get into this mode of um, autopilot basically and uh, uh, I felt I felt that maybe for a bit longer time with Nadal in in finals of Australian Open in 2012 uh, where we played almost for six hours so you know usually it happens when you <laughs> don't have much fuel left in you and you have long exchanges um, but yeah as I said you know I I think between 5-2 and and, and 5-4 and actually closing out the match a lot has happened in 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 my mind, in my in my soul. I think uh, just uh, being filled with with joy of being, you know, kind of serving for a match, being double break up, laughing about the situation, being like um, overwhelmed with positive, uh, you know, emotions and 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 uh, sensations, and then you know, getting myself to the opposite and uh, the opposite side where I'm tense and nervous whether or not I can close it out. Um, you know, but I, I, I guess, you know, in order to, to for, for me to win this trophy, I had to go through that. And, and in, when, you know, you achieve big things in life, um, you need to push yourself uh, above the limit and, and really take the best out of your abilities uh, uh, on a given day. And you need to be ready for it because when it's coming, it's coming, it's coming out hard. You uh, you mentioned Rod Laver earlier, and of course what he did in 1969. Is that idea of a calendar year Grand Slam something that ever entered your mind? Is something to try to aim for or dream of? And now that you're halfway there, which even that is quite rare, just to get the first two of a yeah. year, does it seem achievable and something you want to strive for now? Well, I, I don't. I want to sound arrogant or something, but I, I really, uh, really think that that everything is achievable in in life. And uh, you know, w winning this trophy today uh, gave me f so much uh, happiness uh, and fulfillment uh, that I'm trying to to grasp and I'm trying to cherish. Obviously, this these moments uh, right now, uh, whether or not uh, I can I can reach. A, a, a calendar slam that's um, uh, that's that's still a possibility, uh, but you know I, I I don't think about it right now. You know, right now I'm just try to to enjoy this this experience of winning the trophy that I never won before. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.